Have you ever been out running errands, just doing daily tasks and see a photo opportunity and just think, damn, I wish I had my camera on me right now. And you pull out your phone to capture the moment, but it's just never the same as having your proper camera with you. For the kind of image quality that I want, taking a professional level camera with me everywhere is just not doable. And the quality out of these phones, especially now that we can shoot raw, is actually really good, but you can still tell in a lot of situations that it is a phone. So over the last two weeks, I have been taking this camera everywhere with me. And if you subscribe to the channel, you've probably seen this camera already. This is the Sony ZV-E1. And I have paired this up with the Samyang 35mm 2.8 pancake lens. In the practice of taking a camera like this with me everywhere, a few things have happened. Even though it's only been two weeks of taking this camera around with me, I have begun to get into the habit of looking for photography opportunities everywhere I go. Versus before, I would only be in that photo taking mode when I had a camera on me. And it's honestly led me not only to capture more beautiful photos just from my everyday life, but it's also encouraged me to document my life a little bit more and in a very cinematic way because of this camera. Because of social media, we've been conditioned to only document our lives when it is aesthetic, when it's worth showing off, when it's Instagrammable. And I think we somewhat see our lives through the lens of others. What will other people think? Oh, now is a perfect time to whip out the camera because other people will love to see this aspect of my life. But I think it's really important to document our experiences and the people closest to us authentically. And I've just really enjoyed doing that with this lightweight camera setup. One of the best things about this little camera setup is that I can also shoot like A7S3 quality video when I'm out and about. So if I see something that would be great for B-roll for another video, or I want to whip out the camera and tell a quick story, I can do that without sacrificing any quality. And that's just crazy that that capability is in a camera with such a small form factor. And I've even taken this camera and lens into situations where I would probably prefer to use a more professional camera or a higher resolution camera like the 30 megapixel pixel a7 IV that I use most of the time and the photos come out amazing I'll show a few of them to you on the screen here I know what you're thinking why didn't I just go and buy a Fuji camera because it sounds like that would be right up my alley for this kind of thing and there has been a lot of interest in Fuji cameras over the last couple of years, mainly because of their pocket size power, amazing features, and the film simulation recipes. And while I really do like Fujifilm cameras, those that have been around uh, watching this channel for quite some time, you guys will know that I made a lot of videos about Fuji in the past, having owned an X-T2 since early 2017. But I have a little bit of a bone to pick when it comes to film simulations. I do shoot film quite a lot. I just bought a medium format 6x7 camera and I've been putting quite a few rolls through it despite the expense of the film and the developing. And for me, it is quite hard to replicate film even in Lightroom with access to countless you know, controls and parameters. 
But one of the misconceptions with film is that you shoot the photo and it just comes out like that. That's just how it looks. But behind the scenes, there's actually a lot of variables that go into film photography. There's obviously the type of film that you use, whether you overexpose or underexpose that film, the exposure time, whether you push or pull the exposure in the development process, the kind of scanner that you use to actually scan the film. A few weeks ago, I actually had the opportunity to scan my own film at a lab in Bali. And I got to sit in front of the professional lab scanning setup and actually tweak the photos myself and there is actually a lot of control that you can get when you scan an image from the white balance, the tint, the contrast levels, exposure. I think what a lot of people don't realize with film that every exposure goes through a Lightroom sort of a color grading process and that's what you pay the lab to do. So while I think that film simulations are great, they are a little bit hit and miss. That's the experience that I've had in the past anyway. And I just love editing each and every photo myself. That is like a huge part of the creative process for me. Just being able to tweak the feeling of the photo so it represents what it really felt like to be in that moment. So yeah, I guess the point of this video is to encourage you to get a compact camera setup. There are plenty out there. You don't have to have a full frame setup like this. This just worked out really well because I already had the camera. I found this pancake lens. Pretty sure this would be the smallest full frame camera setup like there is that exists. I don't really know. Um, I know that there's another compact full frame camera, the Sigma FP. I'm not sure if a lens like this exists for that system, whether you could make a smaller setup, but for me, this has to be one of the smallest out there. But yeah, whether it's full frame, APS-C, Fuji, whatever brand, I really think that it is awesome to have a camera on you at all times, especially a camera that makes stunning images and is really fun to use. I think that's the main thing. So that's it from me guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, all the photos in this video were edited with my Lightroom preset pack, which is kind of like a film simulation as well. If you pick the preset pack up, thank you so much. It helps to support this channel. I really appreciate you guys, anyone who's already bought it so far. But yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm gonna get out of here. I'll see you guys in the next video.